Hey, what's going on, Kim Focus? Kim Spence in the building. Oh, no, it is a hot one out here today. Um, I am uh, full transparency. I am coming from uh, recording Bible study uh, at the office, and um, I'm gonna just call this let's call the spade a spade. Um, I said something during the Bible study that I wanted to expand upon, and it really deals with Leviticus chapter. 26 and verse 29, which is actually where we left off last week. Um, I encourage you when that Bible study comes on to tune in because I know that for the longest time it's it's sometimes you can see something in scripture and it'd be like, yo, what does that mean? What is that aiming at? What's that talking about? Um, and I can share with you um, this perspective. Um, that I started to speak on real quick, and I'll tell you what. If you have not started or attempted to start to grow your own food, please start to grow your own food. And I share that with you. With Now, mind you, I say grow your own food. Here's the truth. You're not going to be able to grow everything. No one's growing wheat to then be able to take the oats and make, you know, oats and then make bread with the rest. No, you know, no one's really doing that. Uh, unless you live have enough land to do basically a full-on farm but there are certain things that we are capable of um, things that we can do um, one business principle I learned I understood I grew and, and continued holding on to the principle it is a basic form of business in regard to supply and demand we are seeing um, food prices going up we are seeing food prices reach some heights that don't make sense, like at all make any sense. And um, one of the issues of a compounded threat of or uh, uh, increase in price is your dollar goes is, is shorter. It can't go as far as it did before. So a cylinder of oatmeal was at one point one ninety nine. Now it's $7.99. If it's not $10.29, I saw one time um, that deals with everything from Quaker Oats to the generic brand, that it's gone up substantially. And one thing about supply and demand that is not false, if you don't have that much supply, then what you do is you raise the rates to keep people from buying up all the supply so you're able to re-up as soon as you possibly can. If the price is cheap, you got too much. That's the basic law of supply and demand. But there is another weightier matter of supply and demand that we don't discuss. We can talk about inflation, and inflation must be accounted for um, in terms of the steadiness of a price, whether it goes up and it stays high. But if the price goes up and keeps going up and keeps going up and keeps going up, what you stated is not that you don't have enough supply. You're saying that where your source is, is dried up. Which means that when it comes to certain things, there's some things you just ain't going to have. Um, because at a certain point, the price is going to be too high to purchase. We love kale. A lot of people love kale, love salad. Um... But at a certain point, the price will get so high where it's like, wait a minute, I was able to have kale last year, but now I don't have any. Yes, inflation plays a part, but what should have been a clear cut sign that something was very wrong and that we needed to take drastic measures um, to protect and facilitate for ourselves. What should have been a plain sign was when they said, oh, well, uh, inflation or not inflation, but that there is no recession. Um, one, and the sign, well, I say that's the most recent sign. The sign before that was there's a shortage of workers, a shortage of employees. It's not a shortage of, or rather, it's not just a shortage of employees. If you have a shortage of employees and prices go up, that means you don't have enough producers on the land. If the prices continue to raise, that means you don't have anybody sewing. This is me from my business degree and looking at stuff quite plainly, some things that I've seen. Because at one point, and this is not going to make sense to a lot of people, oxtail. 
Oxtail has always, let me fix this. Oxtail has always been expensive. Amen. It has always been expensive. The price has fluctuated. Might have been $4 a pound. Might have been $3 a pound. But it always fluctuated. And then you watch what you got. I'm not talking about in recent years. I'm talking about in 1995. I was the one that went to the store with my mother, my brother, and I both went to the store with our mother, and we watched these prices that were ridiculous back then. And when I say ridiculous, I mean ridiculous as relative to the particular prices of normal meat. A pound of chicken was not $3, but a pound of oxtail was 2 It didn't make sense. It was expensive back then. And it's like, man, why is this so, so inexpensive and as time goes on as time continues on the prices have gotten sky high they have an oxtail cheesesteak i promise you i am not buying an oxtail cheesesteak why am i not buying an oxtail cheesesteak because the last price i heard quoted at one place was forty dollars i am not spending forty dollars for a short sandwich that ain't working for me i will never have it unless i cook it and it still might cost forty dollars what i'm saying is at a certain point prices get so high or continue movement upwards primarily because they don't have the source anymore if you have no workers to work the soil or work the animals prices go up if you have workers that can work the animals, prices come down in an immediate drop because animals are slightly different. Milk is slightly different. Eggs are slightly different. For those of you who are firmly against eggs and firmly against, listen, egg, chickens produce eggs every single day. I'm not lying primarily because one of my neighbors has uh, four chickens, five chicken, five hens, and those hens produce eggs every single day. And having eaten from those eggs last week my god they were delicious but having eaten from those eggs this is without a rooster now they're laying unfertilized eggs but i've been eating from those eggs i'm like man this is good and it's not as screwed up as the market oh brother spence what you're saying you heard what i said i said what i said and i said again why does this all come up here's something you're gonna hear in bible study tonight you're going to hear when people are hungry, they do crazy things. When you find out Leviticus 26 and verse 49, is that 49 or 29? 29 is a prophecy. That prophecy is expounded upon in Deuteronomy 28. It comes to completion in 2 Kings 6. When you see, get to 2 Kings 6 and you see it, you're like, what? And at a certain point, it was hard, but not because I didn't know what the scripture said, but primarily because when I sat there, I thought, I'm like, man, I looked at our society today and I froze. And you'll see me in the thing, I freeze. And I'm sitting there like, man, because people do crazy things when they're hungry. People do crazy things when they're hungry. So if you and your neighborhood is hungry, what happens? Now, let me share this. I got to say this primarily. I need to get back to what I'm talking about, um, which I said I would expound upon. I actually said in that video, but um, I say it primarily uh, for this reason. Um, you can grow food in a five gallon bucket. Um, you can get the soil, put it in there. You can grow uh, onions, uh, cilantro and tomatoes in one environment in the bucket there are certain foods we can grow there are certain foods that we can grow from the food we already have you have onions you have garlic you can grow that quite easily um there are tons of videos on youtube university i say youtube university that's not the name of it but you can go to youtube and find that information for free you can buy books books are great because they never run out of power they never lose internet strength or wi-fi signal they don't do any of that you can take that information and run with it and say, man, I got the information. Uh, there are small things you can grow. If you can cut the cost that's happening in your house by growing kale, do that. If you can cut the cost by saving and growing onions and garlic, do that. If you could grow the, cut the cost by growing tomatoes, 
do that. If you can cut the cost in any way you possibly can with how much we're spending in the market, I, I encourage you, please do it. There are bags, I shared this, I said five gallon bucket, you could do that. There are five gallon bags that you could put soil in. You can buy it on Amazon, you get five bags for 10 bucks. That's two bucks a bag. Um, 10 bucks and change with you know taxes and whatnot. But when you uh, have that, you can grow something in there. I say this to you because listen, I want you to live your best life. And many times it's difficult to live the best life when it's hard to eat. It's hard to think straight when it's hard to eat. It's hard to operate in love to everyone when you have nothing to eat. So I want you to do something to care for you, for your family, um, for the Camden Church. Y'all know who y'all are. Um, we have great resources within the church. Sister Rosette is in Florida. She's moving right now. But keep her in prayer for that move. But uh, yeah, today's the 6th. She's moving right now. I um, started yesterday. So keep her in prayer uh, for that. Uh, primarily because... Um, uh, well, I, I, I say that because she's a green thumb that knows her stuff. Sister Sally is a green thumb that knows her stuff. Sister Arlene... Did she tell me? I think. I could be wrong. But these are great sources that we can gain and glean great information from on how to feed our family. Sister Sally... I, I can speak to this uh, primarily because I know Sister Sally has uh, fed her family. Yeah, I am. Has fed her family um, with um, what she grew in her backyard. Um, her sister Rosette has fed her family what she grew in her backyard. So we have great resources near us. Let's plug into those resources as best as we can to learn what we can so that we can provide for our families. It's time to save money by cutting the cost. Even if you got to put sweat equity, that means hands, that means put your hands into the dirt to do something that tastes a lot better and will feed your family and continue to feed your family. It's one little skill, but imagine if you learn this one little skill and you can cut the cost in your own household. You got to find time to do it, but you got to be willing to do it. That's my thought. God bless you. God keep you. I'm going to upload this to my YouTube. And I'm going to put some links in there. For the Amazon bags that I purchased. I'll put that in there for some YouTube videos. That have been good at teaching basics. In terms of growing food that I follow. And I've read and, or, or watched. And learned from. So we'll put all of that there. So you can have it too. God bless you.